Hey, 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 I kind of love that. So today is another squishy makeover. Thank God, because I'm about two days away from a squishy makeover withdrawal, which is incredibly serious. My last squishy donation unboxing video was the biggest one I've ever done. And you know, there were many interesting surprises that came out in that video, but I won't spoil that for you if you haven't already seen it. Since there were so many options in that video, the requests were kind of completely all over the place, but I did notice that a lot of people were bringing up this one, who's apparently too fat for the camera. Wait, what is that in the frame? Ugh, that's going to annoy me. Do you believe this? Another popular one was this cupcake. Look at this. And for the other two victims, I maybe possibly could have potentially just chosen them by myself. I chose this cat burger, which I got quite some time ago and I've been wanting to work on it for a while. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the possibilities. Yes. I did see some requests for the unicorn squishy. I don't know which one most people were talking about specifically. So I just made the executive decision so that's the group and let's let's get on to squishy roasting here's the first tragedy mediocre squishiness a huge rip here and everywhere and the colors the colors if Ronald McDonald and Barney gave birth to a unicorn this would be the color scheme that's not a good thing <laughs> Also, one side of it has got some kind of like ink stains or something. It almost looks like a bruise. Did Barney do this? On the bright side, it can do this super cool move. Yay. Okay, you know what? It's time. We got to step in and actually try to help this poor fellow. Hold up. Wait, why is the background blue? What's going on here? Why are things changing? It's okay. Let's start with some squishy glue. Yes, the bottle says fabric fusion, but that's clearly a misprint. So I'm applying a thin layer of the glue onto the neck, jaw, under, chin. And once that's dry, we can move on to operation fill those cracks. So I'm just going in with some puffy paint and sealing any significant cracks that I see. Once that's done, the unicorn is ready for her first coat of paint. I'm sticking with a white body, but I did mix a bit of yellow into it to tone it down a little bit so it's more um it's a warmer more friendly white you know and after a million and one coats of that we can move on i'm gonna use this um price sticker <laughs> no white metallic fabric paint for the wings in collaboration cooperation co uh with the gold metallic paint and i did initially paint the horn gold as well but i ended up removing that oh uh, uh, watch it ah uh and using the white metallic paint instead because of future plans. Once that's dry, I'm gonna pop open this box which has an appalling amount of purple paint in it and some clay turds. And I'm just gonna paint the hair with these colors because you know, this video is not sponsored by McDonald's or Barney. Is Barney even still alive? I, I don't think so. Anyway, there's no reason to keep these colors around. So I'm gonna choose some that are a little bit more pleasant and more fitting for a unicorn. Oh, also random side no, people keep bringing up my nails in the comments saying things like, oh my gosh, she's so spoiled. She gets a manicure every single week. I've never had a professional manicure in my life. These are my natural nails, which I grow for free. And this, this here paint is what you call Sally Hansen number 399. I'm not bougie. <laughs> Anyway, back to the unicorn. I feel like this one looked so quick and easy in the edited version, but it took me forever. All the little details in the paintwork. Ooh, pause. I actually love this part. I feel like it's so satisfying. I'm back. So as I'm working on the finishing touches, I get this strange feeling like I'm being watched. I can't shake the feeling that someone is... Yeah, so I didn't draw that. Uh, I just looked down and it was there. So yes, here's the before and after. I think this unicorn definitely has been saved. I think she has found happiness again. I am really happy with this. I love the shine. I love the colors. Oh, and unrelated to the squishy, but I'm kind of digging this blue background as well. I think it does something for me. Am I the only one? 
Okay, next I'm gonna do this big fat panda. And I'm gonna get real with you guys. I was a little scared that you all chose this one because one, it's huge, and two, it's already really cute. So I was pretty sure whatever I turned this into was gonna kind of suck in comparison, but let's give it a try anyway. The squishy though is not without flaws. The ears are kind of trying to leave and the paint is just cracks, cracks, crack, 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 crack. Also, I'm not in love with how his eyes look like they're like giant black holes. And from what I've been told in the comments, this is a panda that's an egg. It's okay. So first we need to glue up the ears, glue them or lose them. Before I start painting this one, I need to address my collection of tan paints because this is a little unnecessary to store them this way. So I'm actually gonna combine them in one container. Oh, it's like one of those mixing videos. Mixing all my tan paint. Ooh, oh my gosh, crazy, wow. Throw a nice shock face on the thumbnail. Million views. <laughs> So let's stop messing around and get to painting. So I'm painting the bottom of the panda and I'm just laying it on coat after coat, building up a nice even color with lots and lots of thin layers of paint. And this took a lot of paint to cover this big panda booty. It looks like I haven't even put a dent in my tan tub, but trust me, I used a lot of paint. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna add some lines in a darker tannish brown color. Mm-hmm. Because this is gonna be a basketball, woo! Just kidding. This is gonna be an ice cream cone panda egg. So the bottom half is going to be the cone, which was pretty tricky to do actually, and the very bottom came out a little wonky, but we can deal, we can overlook that. It was a good try. Also, I'm painting the little limbs and the tail as well. Ah, this is why I have an enormous amount of purple paint mixed in that box, because I'm making the ice cream slash face purple. And seriously, this took so much paint, I cannot say it enough. It was so much paint. I did two coats of that to get it relatively smooth, and you may be wondering about the bald spot. Well, I'm gonna be covering the head with my very dirty bottle of white fabric paint with a whipped cream topping. I'm laying that on real thick so I can get away with a single coat. And while the paint is still wet, this is just a perfect opportunity for sprinkles. I feel like we need a sprinkle song or something. That'll work. Make sure all the sprinkles are nice and settled into that paint. We don't wanna lose anyone. And at this point, I'm thinking the purple is just a little overbearing, drowning in purple. So to break it up a little bit, I decided to add a chocolate strip around the middle, kind of like the cone has been dipped in chocolate. Make it look like a dipped chocolate cone. Sorry, I just got a flashback. After all that has dried, I'm gonna work on the face. And a lot of the struggle is actually taken care of for me because I can still see the indents of the eyes and the raised mouth and nose, so cool. But I did wanna change the face a little to add my own little touch and my own style, whatever, whatever. So I made the nose purple and I added some eyebrows, which I kind of love, I don't know why. Also, I added some little freckles just cuteness. To avoid another black hole situation, I'm gonna add some little highlights into the eyes. And here it is. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if some people like the original better, you know, fair. I could see that. But that panda, it's had its time. It's worn. It's tired. It needed a new look. And for me, the new one is just so much more my style and I'm so happy with it. Obviously, it's not a panda anymore, but is it even still a bear? For some reason, it kind of looks like like a hamster or a mouse to me now? I don't know, I'm not sure. Either way, it's cute. Okay, now it's time for the cat burger. And it's really cute, but it's it's flawed. It is super soft, but it's clearly been used a lot. Lots of cracking, peeling, and color rubbing off everywhere. The pink is a little weird for a burger, but points for creativity, I guess. Also, kind of strange how the slice of cheese is just as thick as the burger patty. Imagine biting into that. It does have some eyelashes added on. This side is kind of waving in the wind 
thinned a little. None of this damage is big enough to need glue, but I am gonna seal in the cracks before starting on the paint job. Ready? Okay. So I'm gonna go in with a more natural color for the hamburger bun. The pink was interesting, but I think I'm okay with keeping it classic, you know? And now I'm realizing I kinda wanna move things around in there. So I wanna move the lettuce down to the bottom, change the cheese layer into a patty, add double slices of cheese in between, change the lettuce into a tomato, and the tomato into mayo. Got it? Okay, let's go. So, for the lettuce, I wanna make it a little bit more 3D, so I'm cutting some very thin strips of memory foam and gluing them along the bottom. It's gonna be pretty subtle, but I'm hoping this will just make it look a little bit more like lettuce. Cool, so I'm gonna paint over this with a nice thick coat of slick paint to seal that all in. <coughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, back to the bun. Gotta work on those buns. And actually, the worn out squishy texture underneath kind of makes it look like bread, don't you think? I was kind of fascinated with that. And now it's about to get interesting because I'm going into the burger and it's gonna be a double patty, of course. All of those little details. Here comes the nice little slice of tomato on top. We gotta go over the lettuce again because that's gotten totally messed up. And oh, it's gonna get good because now I'm adding the cheese in between the patties by adding a line in between and then drawing the little triangles to make it look like the melted edges of cheese. Yes, that's nice. And now starting on the mayo and then I saw it. <gasps> uh I had no idea how that happened until I dug through the footage and here it is. But anyway, I did change the little stuck out circles on the top into slices of onion. I would never, ever put an onion on my cheeseburger to eat it, but I liked that it would add another color in there, so it's fine for the squishy, because believe it or not, I'm not gonna be eating this. Everything is looking pretty good, except for my, my bougie nails. Now I'm gonna try to go above and beyond and add some shading to the top bun, and I was just blending and going back and forth for the longest time, until I got what I wanted. And oh yes, I love that. So all that's left to do is add the details. And again, I can still see the original face, so I have that to work off of, but somehow I still managed to mess it up, of course. And here is the final result. Ignore this little flicker that happens here. Um. I'm sorry. But yes, I love the way this burger turned out. It's everything I love about the original, but fixed up a little bit. And I basically just tried to make it a tiny bit more realistic. Also, I think I'm officially obsessed with food animal combination squishies. They're just amazing. When you think you have a normal burger and then bam. <laughs> but yeah, very happy with how this turned out. Okay, and finally we have the cupcake squishy pieces. I'm always so confused about how this kind of thing happens. Did you loan it to the Tasmanian devil or something? I don't know. If you were ever curious about what the inside of a squishy looks like, you're welcome. What, there are like bits of glitter in there too. But yes, the paint is peeling and completely missing from the bottom part. So of course, the first step is to get this back in one piece. So I'm going to apply the glue and put this baby back together piece by piece. By the way, if you ever have trouble getting fabric glue to work or it doesn't seem to be drying, you wanna make sure you just put a very thin layer. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes and good news, the cupcake is in one piece. So now we just have to deal with some uh, scarring that's left over. So I'm filling that in with some slick paint. One of them did start to open up. No. Keep it together, man. Before I start the real paint job, I'm going to rough it up a bit with some sandpaper because soft and slow squishies tend to have problems with paint sticking to them unless they're sanded first. And I'm going iridescent with this one, I for iridescent, and mixing it with white metallic. And this is going on the cupcake liner. Now, it doesn't look like it because this is special up about 70 times faster than real time, but getting the paint smooth and filling in each one of those little divots was quite quite a long process. And guess what? It needed two coats, so we get to do it twice. Suddenly I'm watching the paint container more than I'm watching myself paint. It's kind of fascinating. 
Okay, once that's dry, oh, it looks cool. I'm gonna add some decoration to this, so I'm just adding some white polka dots in the metallic white to the liner. I just love adding little details like this to things. I think the details really make all the difference. Now I'm gonna cook up some frosting. I'm adding just a little tiny bit of pink to a bunch of white to create a super, super, super light pink. Basically, I wanted to do white frosting, but I didn't want a bright white. I don't know why I'm so against bright white recently, but so I just used a little bit of pink to tone it down. For the heart, I'm using the same pink iridescent to match with the liner, and this frosting definitely needs another layer of paint, so here it goes. You know, I didn't do a whole lot of like changing what things are or adding a lot of memory foam elements to the squishies on this episode, but these all still felt really time consuming because they were either enormous or they just had a lot of little details details and it made the paint jobs take a really long time. But of course, you know, I loved it. I'm not complaining or anything. I'm just, uh, you know, running my mouth as usual. And oh, here we go again. This cupcake took a lot of sprinkles. So if you don't like sprinkles, um, you're gonna hate this. And here is the final squishy. I like it a lot. It's very pink and pastel, and it's it's just nice, you know, it's nice. And best of all, it stays in one piece when you squish it. Amazing. Now the paint job, the sprinkles, whatever, it may not be your style, but you gotta admit, it's a step up from what it was. Wow, the bottom is so shiny, it's like a mirror. mirror Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest squishy of all? Damn. So it's actually gonna be a little while before I do the next unboxing video. I still do have tons of packages to unbox laying around, but I have opened a lot already. For the next squishy makeover, I'm actually just gonna use ones that I've already opened, and I'm gonna ask you guys to vote in the community section instead of on a unboxing video like I normally do. And I'll put that out on Monday. Make sure you stop by and vote at some point next week, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye!